atrial septal defect so atrial septal defect is nothing but an abnormal communication between the two atria the atria are nothing but the two top chambers of the heart so there's a wall in between them so if the wall has a odor we call it asd that is atrial septal defect so guys it's of two types ostium secundum and ostium primum types of asd ostium secundum is very common when compared to ostium primum ostium secundum is generally located so like we are going to speak about the location of these respectively with respect to the fossa ovalis so generally if a aorta is present above and posterior to the fossa ovalis or above or posterior to fossa ovalis we know it's an ostium secundum type of asd which is going to be inferior to the fossa ovalis you know it's an ostium primum type of asd ostium primum type of asd is often associated with an endocardial cushion defect which is classic in down syndrome the sode is associated with a cleft in the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve with or without a cleft in the septal tricuspid leaflet it is the most common congenital heart disease in down syndrome this is what i was talking about ASD is common in females than males. Well, I would say that ASD is starting with A and the ending of a lot of girl names is going to be A, so like including me. So, uh ASD is common in females even compared to males. Important syndromes associated with ASD include Holt-Oram syndrome, Down syndrome, uh Peri-Robin syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Tar syndrome which is thrombocytopenia absent radius syndrome fetal alcohol syndrome rubinstein type b syndrome and ellis von krawald syndrome hemodynamics of asd there is an abnormal communication between the left and the right atrium which is due to the defect in the atrial septum the blood flows from the left atrium to the right atrium because the left atrium has slightly higher pressure than the right atrium so left to right shunt occurs so it's liver in that order so like l and then r so left to right shunt because of this uh, because of pressure difference between the two atria is small there is no shunt murmur the blood passes at a narrow pressure difference there is a volume overload to the right atrium because of the left to right shunt that is a lever l to r left to right shunt the right atrium will undergo dilatation and hypertrophy during diastole large amount of blood passes from the right atrium to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve which is why the tricuspid valve closes a bit late so there is a delayed diastolic murmur and accentuation of the facade sound so like loud as one volume overload to the right ventricle the right ventricular hypertrophy that produces peristernal heave large blood volume passes through the pulmonary valve so there is a pulmonary ejection systolic murmur prolonged blood passage along the pulmonary valve causes a delayed closure of the pulmonary valve so the p2 is delayed and accentuated is delayed because a lot of blood is passing and it's accentuated because a lot of blood is passing and so there is a delayed and a loud p2 which is why we have a wide split and fixed s2 so there's a wide split between p2 and a2 so the time difference increased blood flow through the pulmonary circulation pulmonary pleura that may cause pulmonary hypertension increased blood flow to the pulmonary circulation yeah and the left atrium is not enlarged because it decompresses itself by shunting all the blood that is available to the right atrium at a minor pressure difference the left atrium may enlarge once the reversal of shunt happens that is eisenmenger syndrome develops okay So that was about the hemodynamics of ASD, okay? Okay. So I'm just going to like sum up till here and then we're going to see the rest of the clinical stuff in the next part of the video or the next video as such. So we have like the first there is left to right shunt and then there's no shunt murmur. There is no increase in size of the left atrium because all the blood goes to the right atrium, which is why the right atrium is undergoing dilatation and hypertrophy, and the right ventricle is also undergoing dilat is undergoing hypertrophy, which causes a peristernal heave, which is seen outside, and then we have the pulmonary ejection systolic murmur, and then P2 is delayed and accentuated, and a wide split and fixed S2 is there, and pulmonary pleura that may cause pulmonary hypertension is also there. The left atrium is not enlarged but it can get enlarged in Eisenmenger syndrome. It's common in girls, it's common in Down syndrome, Holt-Oram syndrome, thrombocytopenia absent radius syndrome.